we shall commence this module by discussing that an economy with a population like ours it's tough to make a random decision in hope that it will turn out to be all right hence appropriate decision making needs to be done with correct figures and a team full of people who specialize in their field should be called for forming a committee in an economy like india planning commission came into the picture as the colonial rule had left india in a poor state let us look at the whole development planning in india know about the different aspects of planning in a country like india to learn how planning process takes place in an economy like india identify various facets of planning evaluate the process of economic planning and analyze achievements and drawbacks of planning in an economy like india let us understand the development planning in india indian economy is a mixed economy where both public and private sectors coexist that is there is freedom to private sector to indulge in economic activities along with some degree of regulation done by the government in the markets development planning in india started from 1950 with the establishment of planning commission of india which assesses the available resources in the country material human and capital and formulates plan and optimal utilization of such resources these plans are called five year plans which are being assessed by planning commission to check their progress in order to contract their shortages by adjusting the existing policies and programs to achieve the plan targets this assessment is known as the mid term appraisal because it is done in the middle of plan process the economic planning was needed after independence in india since the british rule left it is chronic stagnation unemployment and poverty the agriculture and industrial sectors were not growing per capita income growth was stagnant with unequal distribution of wealth saving and investment rates were low in the country and social sectors were neglected to start the process of development in the country five year plans took place with the long term objectives which are included in plans one high economic growth or growth rate of national income alleviation of poverty third self reliance fourth promotion of social justice fifth reduction of income inequalities sixth growth sustainability seventh expansion of employment opportunities and eighth modernization the first seven five year plans mainly focused on these long term objectives however from its plan onward means 1991 onwards focus shifted from straight led development strategy to market oriented development the following tables represents various five years plans along with their time periods public sector outlay and the average rate of growth of the economy now moving on to understand the objectives of planning in india the objectives of planning in india which were mentioned before are discussed in some details as below one high economic growth or growth rate of national income increasing the pace of economic growth or the rate of growth of national income has always been an important objective of five year plans in india greater priority has been assigned to this objective since under the british rule the indian economy stagnated due to large drain of wealth resulting into underdevelopment of the economy so after independence the decision makers chose for higher economic growth as the main objective of the planning also it was considered that the gains of economic growth would ultimately trickle down leading to removal of poverty and inequalities however this did not appear the same for indian economy and in turn resulted into concentration of wealth in few hands the target of national income growth rate fluctuated in the range of approximate 2% in the first plan 
to approximate 5 percent annual thereafter. The 10th plan fixed at 8 percent, 11th plan at 9 percent, while 12th plan at 8 percent again. Number 2, alleviation of poverty. The nature of Indian planning is also social, that, that is, it is also social planning due to focus on high economic growth. Poor suffered because as against the conception held, the economic growth did not benefit the poor. Thus, to ensure decent standard of living to all, poverty alleviation was taken as an objective planning from the sixth plan onward. Various schemes and poverty elevation programs such as M.G. Narega, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Jawahar Rojgar Yojana, means JRY, etc., have been started to eradicate poverty in India. As per the Planning Commission of India, percentage of population living below the poverty line, which was approximate 50 percent during the 1970, reduced from 45.85 percent in 1987-88 to 45 percent in the 1993-94, again to 37.2 percent in 2004-05 to 29.8 percent in 2009-10 and further to 29.9 percent in 2011-12. The twelfth five-year plan aims at reducing the poverty estimates by 2 percent annually, which is 10 percent during the entire plan. Third objective, self-reliance. Another important objective of planning is to achieve self-reliance, which means that a country can rely on its own resources such as food and capital and thus is independent from other countries' political pressure to continue its process of development. The objective was first adopted in fourth plan in concrete form where it was stated that dependence on foreign aid will be greatly reduced and foreign aid net of debt charges and interest payment will be reduced to about half by the end of the fourth plan compared to current level and has been in focus since then. The reason behind this goal was to reduce dependence on foreign aid and grants as it was brought that while trading with developed nation through supply of goods such as food grains, machines and other capital goods, these developed nations took advantage of their position and exploited the less developed country in form of charging exorbitant rates for their goods. Also, the foreign loans and grants increased the burden of the government in form of raising external debt, in turn implying greater political pressure and interference from the developed nation. However, till now this objective has not been fully achieved. Fourth objective, promotion of social justice. Social justice is again an essential issue in Indian economy. This objective has been adopted to ensure equality and inclusion of poor in the development process which is due to the democratic and social nature of Indian planning. This objective mainly includes the reduction and removal of inequalities of income and wealth, ensuring balanced regional development, alleviation of poverty, reduction of concentration of economic wealth and power, launch of special program for backward classes and socially disadvantaged groups such as SC, STs, tribal groups, women, children, handicapped people. The five-year plan have been working in this aspect and have launched various schemes to achieve this target. Fifth objective, reduction of income inequalities. This objective need special attention since the British rule left India with a situation where economic power was concentrated in the few hands, resulting into exploitation of poor and stagnation of economy. Thus, this objective has been a target of development planning in India. However, it never received any high priority. This objective was first undertaken in fourth plan with the view that economic growth will ultimately trickle down resulting into reduction of income and wealth inequality. Various programs 
which ensure greater income and employment opportunities to the poor sections of the society have been launched to achieve this objective. However, as per Mishra and Puri, this objective has been completely removed by the government with the advent of economic reforms and so concentration of economic wealth and power still prevails in India. The sixth objective, growth sustainability. Sustainability of growth of the economy is yet another objective of planning in India. That is, it not only aims at ensuring high growth rate of economy, but also at ensuring high growth rate in the long run. This is because during the process of development resources, which are exhaustible such as coal, petroleum and other material minerals are used resulting into their less availability in future and hence lower future growth rate of economy. Therefore, to ensure balanced growth of economy in present and future, Indian planning aims at ensuring sustainability of development by balancing the requirement of present generation with the future generations. Seventh objective, expansion of employment opportunities. Unemployment is still a major problem in India. The objective of poverty alleviation can be achieved by reducing unemployment and increasing employment opportunity. And so this forms an important objective of Indian planning. It was assumed that by increasing production in the economy, new employment opportunities can be generated which resulted into a shift of focus of planning on production targets. However, even though Indian economy has achieved a high economic growth, there has been slow generation of employment opportunities due to conflict between its production targets and employment targets. Many five years plans achieved their production targets but failed to achieve the employment target due to increase use of modern technology in production which acquired less labor. In this respect, various schemes which are labor intensive and promote self-employment have been initiated by the government in India to generate employment with given investments such as MG Narega, Integrated Rural Development Program, IRDP, Sampurna Gramin Rojgar Yojana, Swarn Janti Gram Rojgar, Savrojgar Yojana, and so on. Its objective, modernization. The objective of modernization came with the six five-year plan and it has been described in the sixth plan document as the term modernization cannot connotes a variety of structural and institutional changes in the framework of economic activity. A shift in the sectoral composition of production, diversification of activities and advancement of technology, the eighth objective, modernization. The objective of modernization came with the sixth five-year plan and it has been described in the sixth plan document as the term modernization connotes a variety of structural and institutional changes in the framework of economic activity. A shift in the sectoral composition of production, diversification of activities and advancement of technology and institutional innovation has all been part of the drive to change a feudal and colonial economy into a modern and independent identity. Much have been done with regard to this objective such as increased use of fertilizers, pesticides, HYV seeds, modern machines such as tractors, tube wells, expansion and improvement in irrigation facilities, machinized farming, etc. in agriculture to enhance agriculture productivity and yield. In industrial sector, there has been application of advanced technology such as use of computers and electronics to carry out production process, use of modern techniques to production and use of advanced capital goods. All these have been undertaken with the view of increasing the pace of development of the economy. Now, Moving on to understand the strategy of development planning in India. The strategy of Indian development planning has been changing from one plan to another depending upon the requirement of the economy. Strategy refers to the use of various instruments of policy and measures adopted to achieve the goals of planning. 
as per Dr. I.G. Patel. Strategy implies essentially a deliberate choice, a choice of the point and timing and manner of attack on the problem in hand. The long term objective of planning in India is mainly to achieve high economic growth along with increased economic equality and social justice. Thus, the role of the government or the public sector has been important in achieving the goals of the planning. However, the public sector which played a dominant role during earlier years of planning saw a decline in its role after initiation of economic reforms in 1991, when private sectors were also allowed to take part in the planning process. During the initial phase of development planning in India, mainly the first three plans, 1951 to 1966, the strategy followed by was growth oriented development strategy. This strategy focused on achieving high long term economic growth along with development of industrial sector. Even though objectives such as alleviation of poverty, removal of income and wealth inequalities, employment expansion were also mentioned, but these were not given high priority. To achieve these goals, huge investments was carried out to achieve to develop the heavy capital goods industries such as iron and steel, chemical industries, etc. as compared to consumer goods industries. This strategy where greater emphasis was put on massive industrialization is known as Melanobis strategy or model as it was framed by PC Melanobis. Apart from this, emphasis was also put on import substitution where restrictions were put on imports in form of tariffs, import quota, etc. and protection was provided to domestic industries. This import substitution led industrialization strategy resulted into higher economic growth, but with it brought with the itself other major problems due to neglect of development in consumer goods, industries and agriculture. By the third plan, agricultural growth rate started to fall down along with rising fiscal deficit due to heavy investment done in heavy industries. Apart from this, the high economic growth did not trickle down resulting into income inequalities. The low rate of agricultural output along with high population growth rate led to rising unemployment and poverty especially in rural India. Thus, a shift of strategy was required to eliminate the mentioned problems. From the fourth plan to the seventh plan, 1969 to 1990, a new strategy was adopted which was called equity oriented development strategy, where high priority was given to alleviation of poverty and hence on initiation of anti-poverty programs in order to achieve the equity goal and improve the living standard of poor. Apart from this, emphasis also shifted to light and consumer goods industries and agriculture. The failure of high economic growth to benefit the poor was recognized and so redistributive measures were undertaken to increase the share of poor in the national income. The strategy gave priority to raising the agricultural output and consumer goods in line with the rising population and increasing demand for consumer goods. This strategy, which was also called agricultural development-led growth strategy, helped the economy to receive again during 1980, where the growth rate of the economy went up to 5.5 percent per annum. However, economic crisis occurred in 1990-91 and in 91-92, the crisis got aggravated due to the balance of payment problem of the country. Thus, government brought in the neoliberal economic reforms in 1991 to tackle these problems and hence new development strategy was adopted. The strategy adopted since 1991, its plan onward is called post-liberalization development strategy or export-led growth strategy. This strategy basically aimed at stabilizing the macroeconomic situation of the economy through fiscal and monetary policies. There was a shift from state-led development strategy to market-oriented development strategy, which resulted into reduction of the role of the government in planning 
and increased participation of the private sector in the development process. The strategy resulted into globalization and liberalization since the economy was open up to the rest of the world to achieve high economic growth. However, there was again the debate on whether this strategy would help in alleviating poverty and in expansion of employment opportunities. Thus, Planning Commission adopted employment-oriented growth strategy to eradicate poverty along with the provision of employment generation program, especially for the poor. The tenth plan redefined the role of government in the development process, especially in the social sector and the development of economy infrastructure. The eleventh plan, on the other hand, emphasized faster and more inclusive growth that is along with high economic growth, it also aimed at a growth process which is more inclusive and sustainable. The twelfth plan which is the current plan aims at faster, more inclusive and sustainable growth. Let us now discuss the financing of the planning in India. To achieve the goal of planning, the five year plans are financed and required resources are assigned to each plan in India. Broadly speaking, there are three sources of finance through which the government generates resources for these plans. These includes first the internal and domestic resources, second the deficit financing and the third the external sources of foreign aid. The internal sources of finance include the revenue from the current account balance, savings, public borrowings and surplus of public enterprises. One important internal source is the revenue from the taxation collected by the state and the central government. Another is borrowing from the market where the government undertake open market operations to buy and sell public or government bonds. The second source of finance is deficit financing where the government borrows from Reserve Bank of India to finance the plans. In the process, RBI prints money which results into increased money supply in the economy and hence to increased prices and inflation. The last source which is foreign assistance or external aid also helps in financing the five year plans in India. It constitutes grants and loans from the foreign countries and international financial institutions such as World Bank, International Monetary Fund and so on. However, in case of external borrowings, this source increases the burden of foreign debt and may lead to external debt trap for the country. As regards to the share of these sources in total finance required for the plans, approximately 80% to 90% are being financed by the internal sources along with the deficit financing. Thus, reliance on external source along with the deficit financing Thus, reliance on external sources is minimal in India. The resources realized in the case of 11th plan was Rs. 37,50,978 crores that is 10.96% of GDP at 2006-07 prices while the 12th plan it is projected at Rs. 80,50,000 50,123 crores that is 11.8 percent of GDP at current prices. Now next we will understand the achievements of planning in India. The development planning in India has proved to be a very important process of planning of planned economic development with its objective to achieve high economic growth the Indian economy has achieved a high growth rate and has been able to maintain that growth. Apart from this, there has been modernization of agriculture sector and expansion of industrial sector, development of infrastructure and social sectors during the first six plans that is during the period 1951 to 1985. The average rate of growth of GDP was approximately between 3 to 4 percent which improved to growth rate between 5 to 6 percent during the seventh plan and further increased to 7 percent during the eighth plan. The tenth plan achieved a growth rate of 7.6 percent while 8 percent growth rate was achieved during the eleventh plan. 
with regard to the 12th plan a growth rate of 8.2 percent per annum is targeted to be achieved so more or less the five year plans have managed to achieve the targeted growth rates fixed for indian economy the growth rate of per capita income has also increased since the advent of planning in india however this growth rate started to increase only after the fourth plan indian planning also altered the growth rate of different sectors of the economy mainly agriculture industry and service sector the agriculture sector among the three sectors have shown the lowest growth rate ranging between 2 to 3 percent per annum on average along with negative rate of growth in some years the industrial sector did report a high performance in some years with growth rate exceeding 10 percent but for some years a reported growth rate less than 3 percent per annum overall it can be said that average growth rate of industrial sector was around 5 percent per annum service sector on the other hand has shown consistent growth with rate around 5 percent per annum on average during the 1950 to over 9 percent in the 1990 and to around 10 percent during the 2000 2010 also service sector contributes to more than 50 percent of gdp in the country the share of industrial sector has also gone up from 13 percent in 1950-51 to around 30 percent at present it is the share of agriculture sector in gdp which has seen a constant decline from around 60 percent in 1950 to around 14 percent currently apart from this the rates of saving and investment have also shown a substantial increase the saving rate increased from 9 percent in 1950-51 to 25 percent in the 1990 and it is the range of 30 percent for 35 percent currently the gross capital formation has risen from approximately 8 percent in 1950-51 to 26 percent in 1990-91 and again 34.9 percent in the 2008-9 there has been progress towards achieving self-reliance and social justice although it has been slow. Various programs have been launched under Indian planning to eradicate poverty and inequalities, expansion of employment opportunities and to ensure balanced development of the sectors. Also standard of living has improved with development of health and education sectors which can be seen from increased literacy rates, average life years and fallen in death rates. However, there are some sphere of the economy where Indian planning has failed to achieve its targets. Next, we shall discuss the shortcomings of the planning in India. Even though planning has led to a lot of development in Indian economy, but there are many areas where it could not fully achieve its targets. One of the most important area where planning could not achieve its the target is poverty elevation. Even though objective of elimination of poverty has been mentioned in each plan, but not much effort has been made in this regard. This problem still exists even after initiation of poverty elevation program. Since the fifth plan, poverty ratio which was 55 percent in the 1973-74 did reduce to 45.3 percent in 1993-94, further declined to 37.2 percent in 2004-05 and is currently 21.9 percent in 2011-12, but it has still not eliminated completely. Thus, although a lot of expenditure has been done on poverty alleviation program, the problem still persists. The next major problem which continues to exist is unemployment. Every five year plan aims at expanding employment opportunities and hence reducing unemployment. However, each plan ended with a much larger number of unemployed than what it initially started with. This was because the entire focus was given to achieving high economic growth, which was assumed to trickle down, but the economic growth could not generate much employment opportunity. Apart from 
this the rapid population growth leading to large labor force created further burden to this problem along with the increasing use of less labor intensive technologies thus modernization which was one of the goals of planning did bring development in the economy but along with it also brought an unemployment due to use of capital intensive technology the inequalities in income and wealth still persist in indian economy since the high economic growth led to the concentration of economic power in few hands and did not trickle down to benefit the poor the objective of the planning has not received any high priority in any plans due to excessive focus on achieving high growth rate and modernization of the economy thus in a sense planning has failed to achieve its objective of social justice since poverty inequalities unemployment still continue to haunt the poorest section of the society other objectives of planned development which are efficient use of scarce and capital resources and self reliance have also remained a distant dream the import substitution strategy which was adopted in order to protect and develop domestic industries failed to achieve self reliance objective due to which the new liberal economic reforms were initiated in 1991 to make the economy globally competitive however opening the economy to rest of the world further accentuated some of the major problems in india while it helped in achieving high economic rate of growth for the entire country the people who suffered most were the ones from the poorer section and the rural parts of india apart from this there have been implementation failures because targets at macro level have not been fully achieved at the micro levels the projects took more time than required to set up thus as has been rightly said by sukhma chakravarti we must face the fact that the most important objective of planning have not been achieved the most cherished goals seems to be almost as distant today as when we set out the road to planned development let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module development planning in india which started in 1951 proved to be a success for the development of the overall economy however there are still major problems which persist and need to be tackled by the economic planning the first plan started in 1951 and ended in 1956 and currently 12th plan is running from 2012 to 2017 planning helped in increasing the pace of economic growth and modernization of the economy a lot of new modern technologies such as irrigation facilities and infrastructures have been brought to the economy however in the case of social justice poverty alleviation expansion of employment opportunities inequalities and self reliance it has not been able to do much thus planning in india need to improve its techniques and adjust its methods according to the requirement of the economy so that a balanced development can take place